You know that the musical is good if you go to see it twice, but what I wasn't ready for is that Standing in the Sky's Edge is even better at Gillian Theatre on the West End than it was at the National Theatre when I went to see it for the first time. In this video, I'm gonna break down five reasons why this musical has impressed me so much. If this is your first time on my channel, then welcome. My name is Christina and I'm on a mission to see 52 shows this year on the West End. And on this channel, I share my reviews, impressions, and everything that you need to know about visiting West so if you like the sound of this then make sure to subscribe and like this video I knew that Standing at the Sky's Edge is one of the best musicals that you can see right now because I did feature it in this video where I talked about the shows that impressed me the most in 2023 but what I wasn't ready for is that the second time I go and see it I'm gonna love it even more I laughed I cried I was amazed by so many things and maybe because I went to see it for the second time I was able to pay attention to more details because I already knew the story so let's start with the story Standing at the Sky's Edge is set in Sheffield in this block of apartments called Park Hill. What is really unique about this musical is that it focuses on one particular apartment in this apartment block across six decades, which means over these 60-ish years, there are three generations who lived in this apartment with quite a different socioeconomic background and quite different challenges that they faced in their life. And this all helps really relate to the people because the story is so simple about them moving into this new home which for all of them was kind of representing the new beginning and everything that happens from there is just life challenges and how they dealt with it given the environment both political and social that they were in at the time. With that in mind I do think that British audiences will enjoy this musical the most because there is that relatability and understanding of the circumstances and what the musical is based on especially if you have any connection to Sheffield or understand the story of this city it will hit home like no other musical on the West End. Even if you are not from the UK there are so many common themes such as love, loss, just general struggles that these characters face throughout different decades and it kind of brings us all the way to 2020. They did not go into what happened in 2020 that's kind of where it stops but it's really close it's like literally just like four years ago so it's very relatable to everything that everyone is experiencing when they're trying to make a new start in a new home. This is one of those musicals that did not create a whole host of new songs for it, but it uses already existing songs from Richard Holy, who is a songwriter, musician from Sheffield and very established figure in the music space. He was in bands such as Pulp and Long Pigs and after that continued into a solo career and wrote some amazing songs that his admirers knew. But the then someone came into his dressing room after a tour and said that these songs would really work well for a musical and the character that he is he said like oh it sounds like a terrible idea so I think we should do it and I'm so glad that he said it because it is absolutely incredible how they managed to weave these songs into the narrative you could not tell that these are not songs that are written for this musical and that is incredibly fascinating and it just goes to say how big of storyteller these people in the creative team are to weave it so skillfully and at no point it felt like these songs are forced. They all set the mood so well and they just fit where they are so well. I was genuinely so impressed, especially the second time when I went to see it because I feel like I kind of had a little bit more space to just indulge and enjoy what I'm seeing and there was also a band on stage at all times. There's also a little bit of interaction with them and you can see them playing and there's also like a few solos on the guitar. You can music really takes you on a journey through every single scene and maybe in this musical compared to some other more like West End type of musicals, there isn't that like each character has its theme but all of these characters kind of share the theme song and there is the same song that the show starts with and ends with and it really represents a full circle in terms of that music journey. My favorite part musically was the end of the first act when they're singing the song there's a storm coming it just escalates into a very big riot on stage and it kind of like culminates with that song and that song if you listen to it even apart from the cast recordings it does have 
have that feel to it. Another thing that I was super impressed by is the choreography and use of space at the Gillian Lynn Theatre. What's very unique about the set of this musical is that it's kind of in the corner so the cast is using kind of three different angles to speak to the audiences and also the choreography is set in that way and this really fits nicely into the Gillian Lynn Theatre and the way that it is set up. This also meant that at some points there were cast members in the audience dancing and the lighting was amazing. There's a lot of movement a lot of times where people are just like passing through the stage or like just giving you that feeling of a very buzzing apartment building block. Choreographies are incredible especially when it comes to the biggest moments of the show such as the end of the first act when there's a bit of a mess happening on stage and there are also like the clippings from the papers being thrown everywhere and I think it just doesn't matter where you are sitting you're gonna have this experience of constant motion and also this being contrasted with that stillness when there are solos or just those very family oriented moments that the characters are going through when they're in their apartment. What also helps with choreography being so layered is the set that has a few different levels because they try to replicate the stairs and getting onto the first floor, the apartment building and kind of the corridors. So there are like so many different ways that cast is kind of passing through these different places on the stage and it just really gives you the feel like you're standing in front of an apartment building and watching people pass by. I can't talk about this musical without emphasizing how amazing the cast is and there are so many of them. There are some people who are just there as dancers and ensemble members and they are magnificent but obviously the cast who are in the lead roles just steal the show with their amazing voices and stage presence and just generally the amazing emotion that they kind of build with their co-stars. Rachel Wooding and Joel Harper Jackson are a couple from kind of that 70s 80s era and the two of them have the most incredible voices and chemistry on stage. They are on stage husband and wife and they start from moving into an apartment as newlyweds all the way to pretty tragic and Rachel's voice on a few occasions just completely grabs your attention. You can see the tears in her eyes and her voice really reflects that and it's so moving. I honestly had goosebumps multiple times when she was singing. Another amazing duo are Laura Pitt Pulfort who is Poppy and Lauren Redding who is Nikki. The two of them are also on stage couple and they have a very stressful relationship and there is a lot of push and pull dynamic between the two of them. Lauren who is playing Nikki had quite a few fantastic solos and these were some of my favorite moments in the show. This story is very moving and engaging and I do think that on a very personal human level this resonates so much because it's about relationships, it's about new beginnings, it's about challenges people face, it's about the life that you dream for yourself that you kind of feel like is escaping you and these are just like very common themes that people experience that can resonate with anyone and when you have this beautiful choreography and amazing music on top that just flows and you feel completely enamored by this amazing musical that is so wholesome and genuinely makes your heart feel so warm but sad at the same time. There was no dry eye in the audience at some point you could just hear people just sniffle and it was so emotional at times but it's a good type of emotion. I left the theater feeling like my heart was full rather than being extremely sad. For the practical side I paid the ticket 25 pounds and I was sitting in the stalls row D. I was all the way to the right side and honestly this was such an amazing seat. I did not have any kind of obstruction of my view and I was so close to the stage that I could really see the expressions and the emotions that these characters were bringing but if you really want to experience this choreography that I was talking about then probably sitting somewhere a little bit further down or even like on the balcony would be better because you can kind of see the whole stage because the stage is pretty big and the cast is numerous so you'll be able to follow the action better from a slightly different seat but if you are on a budget then I think this is such a great seat to sit at. I would say that because a lot of the action happens on that kind of right side of the stage maybe 
maybe if you're picking in between far left or far right, I would stick to the right side of the stage so that you can see as much of the close-up action as possible. Standing at the sky's edge is on until August, so if you want to see this show, then I think now is the time for you to book the ticket. As mentioned, this is one of the five shows that I have recommended in my top five of 2023 video. So if you are wondering what are the remaining four, then check this video out.